Earlier this year, Jeff Bezos went in the Lex Friedman podcast and said this. Can you actually describe the the crisp document? Like this is one of the legendary aspects of Amazon, uh, of the way you approach meetings. This is the six page memo. Maybe first describe the process of, of running yeah. a meeting with memos. And meetings at Amazon and at Blue Origin are unusual. When we <laughs> when we get new when new people come in, like a new executive joins, they're a little taken aback sometimes because the typical meeting will start with a six page narratively structured memo, mm-hmm. and we do study hall we, for thirty minutes. We sit there silently together in the meeting and read. So now we're all on the same page. We've all read the memo. And now we can have a really elevated discussion. And this is so much better from having a slideshow presentation, you know, a PowerPoint presentation of some kind, where that has so many difficulties. But one of the problems is PowerPoint is really designed to persuade. It's kind of a sales tool. And internally, the last thing you want to do is sell. You want to, again, you're truth seeking, you're trying to find truth. And the other problem with PowerPoint is it's easy for the author and hard for the audience. I was surprised when I heard this because presentations are such a big part of corporate culture. We've trained countless people who spent sleepless nights before a presentation. In fact, even I have spent five years creating, pitching, and structuring presentations for my first job. But Amazon takes a completely different approach. And without any presentations, they're rumored to have super productive meetings. So we spoke to an insider at Amazon, Navani Nandakumar, who's a senior product manager. She also worked at companies like Meta, Cognizant, TCS, so on and so forth. And we wanted to understand three things. Why one of the biggest companies in the world does not use presentations? What is the process that they use to make meetings so productive? And how can you adopt these practices and stop wasting time in meetings? Let's get into it. By the way, if you're new here, my name is Radeep from Frantically Speaking. We release communications content like this all the time. So if you want to know how to make your communications more efficient, you can hit subscribe. And if you want an actual training to take your communications to the next level, you can book a free consultation call with us. Link is in the description and we can talk if we want to work together. So my conversation with Bhavani was super insightful. She's working at Amazon in California right now and she spoke about Amazon's deep writing culture. Instead of presentations, they have simple written documents. So we don't need to worry about creating fancy slides and designing them and sounding confident. We just need to focus on one thing and that is maximum clarity. And she gave us a detailed account of what Amazon's writing culture is all about. Amazon, yes, they have a very strong writing culture. And that's a very integral part of the meeting structure inside Amazon. Like everything you build has to have a document associated. It's a narrative. It depends upon the type of product, feature, capability, whatever you want to launch, anything you want to launch, any program, any product, any feature has to be written as a narrative doc. And that's what drives and steers conversations inside Amazon. You have to write a doc, you have to get your peer or leaders buy-in, sell it out to your internal customers first before you actually go into your external customer. It's my second year inside Amazon and I might have written like somewhere up to like 100 documents uh, already. The reason why I connect is, connect a doc to a meeting is like every meeting when I plan or or schedule a meeting, it's typically like your first half an hour, you just give the doc link and everybody is on mute. They read the doc, which is unusual. Like the first time I, I came in, I, I knew to an extent that there is a writing culture. In fact, writing was a part of my Amazon interview process itself. But the first meeting I was, I was just given a doc and I was asked to read and comment on it. I was I was lost. It took a while for me to like get accustomed to this practice. but I found great value in having a doc associated with a meeting. It gives you a structure. It helps me as a meeting organizer to plan out what do I want to discuss during the meeting. This is my goal. Not everything can could be presented like verbal, uh, like over a presentation or over like just verbally during a meeting. It might not completely grab the participant attention. But my question in the end was, aren't presentations better? Uh, Don't they help you visualize an idea more effectively? Don't they add more depth 
in the overall meeting. And Bhavani's counter really made me think about presentations overall. Because she told me when you focus on those elements, you're missing out on something a lot more important. It gives you a two-way perspective of communication. As a presenter, when I'm doing a presentation, that's what Chef also, Jeff Bezos also indicates. When you're doing a presentation, it's usually a one-way uh, presentation. I have to like entirely talk about my presentation, my points. I, I would have, I have to like verbally craft all these narratives over the visual presentation on the PowerPoint to be able to like present. And by the time I'm like done with my 50 slides, there might be somebody who's like in the 10th slide who just got lost there. There's no there's no way that that person could come and give me a feedback or they might even forget that feedback. So when there is a narrative written, when there is like uh, the time you take to write a clear and concise narrative about what you want to do, whether it is a product or a feature or a program, what what are the goals of it? It, it, it drafts out everything. It helps you to flesh out things um, from the right perspective, answer all those questions uh, from the reader's perspective as well, um, and craft that structure in a better way, clear out all the ambiguities that might be associated. It gives us the way to frame our perspective as well as get the, the reader or the internal customers buy-in towards a program or a project. And that completely made me rethink presentations as a whole. But I wanted to go deeper into this as to what exactly is a part of this particular document and why one of the smartest entrepreneurs in the world, Jeff Bezos, really propagates these documents. What is really included in them? And here's what Bhavani had to say. Let's say I'm launching a particular product feature. Uh, it's a new feature. I basically, and it's a proposal document. I, I have to present that to all the leaders as well as my peers, uh, peer teams who are using that particular product or group of feature. I might have to craft it in terms of what is the goal of that particular feature? Why are we doing? Why is it important for the business to launch this particular feature or product or capability? Like say, for example, it's going to improve efficiency. It's going to improve, like save so much time or whatever it takes. You have to write out all that. You might want to like talk about what are the existing processes that might be impacted? What are the new processes that might be impacted? Who are the stakeholders? What is the RACI associated? What is the timeline of implementation? What is the ambiguities? How are we going to assess the ambiguities? What are the things that I don't know now but I'm going to figure out on the way? I'm just calling out everything. Like, so it gives a complete visibility for everybody. And it also gives an opportunity. There might be a case where I, I really am not completely cognizant of the impact. And that is typically highlighted out. I'm supposed to be covering that, but it's also typically called out during the meeting. It said, hey, I think you missed this. You might want to be uh, partnering with this particular team because I think they are using this particular feature. So you might just want to check out. Or is there a work? Is there a... A risk plan. What are the risks? What are the law? The the out outcomes expected. What does what is what does success mean? What are we going to track? How are we going to track? It lists everything, and that's like like a like a typical uh, proposal or a business requirements document. I I have to go with prepared for a meeting. Uh, when I'm presenting it to the leadership and team. But keeping all of these things aside, the most important thing that Amazon focuses on is realism, not idealism. Idealism is that, hey, everyone's going to write their docs on time and we're going to everyone's going to read them at their own time and come in and we're going to have a productive meeting. But people don't really do that. And Jeff Bezos knows that. In fact, this is what he said in an interview. The reason we read them in the room, by the way, is because just like, you know, high school kids, executives will bluff their way through the meeting as if they've read the memo. Because we're busy, and so uh, you gotta actually carve out the time for the memo to get read, and that's what the first half hour of the meeting is for. And then everybody's actually read the memo. They're not just pretending to have read the memo. And this interview really made me realize how a company, even at that level, can 
just be so disruptive with its meeting productivity. Now, how can you and me adopt these principles in our work culture? Probably if you're working in a job, we can't go and just ban presentations like that. But what we can do is the next meeting that we have, we can try associating a doc with that particular meeting to write down what the objective is, to write down what the crux and rationale is, to write down frequently asked questions, to write down anything that the audience would find useful. And when we start writing, it not only gives more clarity in the meeting, but it provides more clarity to the person organizing the meeting as well. And what we might find is after we write down this document that we might not need a meeting at all. But at the same time, having a written document is not enough to have a productive meeting. We also need to understand how to use storytelling skills to persuade our listeners and put across an idea. In fact, I highly recommend you check out this video right here. We've taken an other mega entrepreneur who's unfortunately not with us anymore to teach you how you can use the magic of storytelling in a business environment. I'll see you in a second.